Okay, so I, I told you I would uh, I would look at this problem. Um, basically, you have three light bulbs hooked up in a situation. No, it's just two light bulbs. I thought it was three. Okay, it's just two. Well, that makes it a little bit easier. That's fine. So there's some uh, battery. It's three volts right there, and then we have two light bulbs like that. And so. <clears throat> the light bulbs I've, I've drawn in the conventional resistor style, since that's what they are. But, but you know, we could really think of it like here's the normal wire, and then the filament's like a really thin wire of different material like that. That's all it is. It's just a really thin wire made of tungsten. Okay. And so in this case, we're going to assume the the contribution to the change in potential due to these thicker wires is negligible. All that matters is the thinner wire. Is that it? Is this two bulbs? Yeah. Okay. So um, the first question says, you know, what if you measured the current in these different locations, what would you get? Okay, so if I measured the current, let's say right here, right here, right here, and right here. Okay. Well, let me call this I1, uh, I2, and I3. So we have the current, first of all, we have conservation of current. So <clears throat> if this were a water pipe and there's water going through here and it splits, some of it goes through one light bulb and one, some of it goes through the other, and it comes back, these two have to be the same. You know, think about what if they weren't? What if this had eight electrons per second and this was 10 electrons per second at that point? Then where would those extra electrons be coming from? I don't know, there's no, there's no other thing that would, that would make that not the same. Okay, it's one loop. You have to have the same uh, <coughs> electrons per second, which is current. So these two would have the same uh, value of current. The question asked about a compass. If you have the same, if you have the same current, it's going to make the same magnetic field and deflect the compass the same amount. Well, right here we have a node, and so at a node we also know that uh, the current coming in has to be the current coming out. So that means that the current in 2 has to be less than 1, and the current in 3 has to be less than 1. And also, since this is symmetrical, the current in 2 and 3 has to be the same as each other. But they're both less than wire 1. Okay, that was the, that was the first part, um, the first real part. And the second part asked about charges. I'm not going to do that. Let me, let me do the, the next part that you probably had trouble with. And that was, they give the filament length and the filament radius. Um, and they ask for the electric field uh, here. Let's call this, they call this A, B, and C. So I call it E1, E2, and E3. They want the electric fields in these uh, three locations. I think that's what it was. Three bulbs. Wait, this says three bulbs. Oh, in the three bulbs, they had two circuits. Okay, they had they had another circuit like this. Okay, and this is um, this is what we'll call another one. Uh, what about the deflection in this one? Is the deflection going to be the current deflection due to this current going to be more or less than that one? That's a good question. If this is the same battery, then think of it in terms of <clears throat> the loop rule, right? If I uh, do E dot DL along that whole thing, then this piece is going to have to have the same current as that because I could do a loop this way and I could add up the voltages, which I'm going to do in a second, and I would see that this current is going to have to be the same as that. That means that the current here is going to be greater than the current here because this current is going to be the sum of those two currents, so it's going to be greater than just one bulb by itself. Okay. But let's find the electric field. I'm going to do this one first, and then I'll find the electric field in those two cases next. So right here, let's say that they, this is really like that, and this is uh, four millimeters long, and then they give a radius of 6 times 10 to the negative 6th, R equals 6 times 10 to the negative 6th meters. 
Okay, so in this case, let me apply the loop rule. So the loop rule says that as I add up the change in potential around this whole thing, it has to come up to zero. So I get zero equals, if I go across there, I'm going to get a plus EMF. And then I'm going to have the electric field is going to be going down that way. So in here I have an electric field. So the, and the rest I'm going to assume is negligible. So here I'm going to get minus E times the length. Because that's a constant electric field over the length of that filament. That's what I get. So how would I find the electric field? Well, I just go, the electric field is going to be EMF over L. So that's going to be 3 volts, so three, two 1.5 volt batteries, divided by the length of 4 times 10 to the negative third meters. And so I get 0.75 times 10 to the third volts per meter. And that's the electric field in here. Okay. Um, that, that's it. Now, if I do the loop rule here, I'm going to get the exact same thing, right? If I do this loop, it doesn't really matter what loop I choose. If I do that loop, it's going to give me the exact same equation with the exact same filament, exact same L. I get the exact same electric field. What about E2? Well, I could do I could do two ways. I could do this loop, which is the exact same thing, or I could do this loop. Let me set up that loop just so you can see what it looked like. If I go that way, the electric field's that way, so I get minus E2L. And then I'm going to go against the electric field plus E1, I'm sorry, that's E3, I call it E3, L equals 0. So here I get E3 equals E2. So it's the same also. So they're all the same. They're all the same value. It doesn't, it doesn't, I don't need to even use the electron mobility. I don't need to use the radius <coughs> of the thing because um, I'm getting a phone call. Uh, I don't need to use those because it, it just doesn't come into play. They're the same electric field. Okay, the last part says, uh, how would you find the electron mobility? If they give you the current of I equals 0.08 amps equals Q N A U E, find the electron mobility. Okay, so this is one, this is the charge of an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. This is the uh, charge carrier density, which they give you. Uh, A, you could find, this is just going to be pi r squared, and you just found E. So, that's it. Now I can answer my phone call. <laughs>